Hey guys, it's Max with Fifth Street Fab. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to get started with pulse MIG welding. I use pulse MIG welding on aluminum almost daily, and I want to show you how to get those benefits at home. Thanks for watching. Make sure you subscribe and hit that bell if you're here for the first time. That way you get notified every time I upload one of these videos. Okay, let's get to it. This is spray transfer right here. Now spray transfer occurs when you have very high voltage and the wire actually liquefies prior to entering the puddle. So you get a real hissing noise. And spray transfer is awesome for really thick metal. This is short circuit MIG. This is what you've seen me use in all my MIG welding videos. Short circuit MIG is what most home welders are using. And this is where the wire actually makes contact on the metal and shorts itself out. Think of it as a fuse blowing. The wire acts as that fuse. That's why you have that popping noise because every time it's going pop, pop, pop. Uh, it's a great method, but it isn't consistent in getting proper fusion every time. And that's why there's no pre-qualified short circuit MIG procedures by the AWS. You can qualify a short circuit MIG procedure but there's no pre-qualified ones. And finally we have pulse transfer. And pulse transfer is a form of spray transfer where you're using a very rapid voltage pulse from high to low and it liquefies the wire prior to hitting the metal just like with spray transfer. But when you're using spray transfer, you're using a high voltage the entire time and you can really only use it on thick material in the flat position. With pulse, you can weld thin and thick material and you can use it in any position. That's what's awesome about it. To use Pulse MIG, you have to have a MIG machine that's capable of Pulse, just like the HTP Pro Pulse. The first step in running Pulse MIG is to change out your gas. This HTP is set up to run Pulse MIG on steel with either a 9010 or a 928 mix gas. There's other gases that you can use for Pulse MIG, but that's what this machine was built to run. This bottle I have here is a 9010 mix. That means it's 90% argon and 10% carbon dioxide. I'm going to set my gas flow around 30 CFH. When you're welding in pulse mode, any little hiccup in your wire feeding system will be magnified at the tip. So we're going to start with a fresh tip, clean out the roller, and adjust our wire tension. We're going to be putting on an 035 tip, even though we're going to be running 030 wire, because manufacturers suggest running an 035 tip, uh, because with pulse transfer, it heats up so much that um, the wire will actually expand a little and it can get gummed up in there. Now I'm cleaning out the drive roller. I've run a lot and lot of wire through this roller and I can see a ton of buildup from the copper coating going through it. Now we're going to set up the wire tension. I like to put my thumb in front of the tip just lightly and then pull the trigger and adjust that wire tension until it pushes past my thumb and then I'll turn it back slightly until it stops pushing past. If you guys have a different way of setting up your wire tension, let me know. I'd love to hear a new way. With this, I'm just running your regular 030 ER70S6 wire. To get into pulse mode on the HTP, you just go into mode, scroll to pulse steel, make sure we're using 030 wire and we're set up with either a 9010 or a 928 gas mix. Hit select and boom, ready to weld on some pulse. Next, you just adjust your wire speed to your material thickness and that'll get you set pretty dang close. Next, we're gonna talk about your arc length and your voltage controls your arc length. And your arc length is the distance from your workpiece that your wire will start to spray from. And what this also does is help control how tight or how wide your bead is. So let's say you're running a fillet. You might want a shorter arc length or a tighter arc length. That way you can get into the root better. But on an outside corner, you might want a bead that helps wrap those corners around. And if you have a gap, you might want a wider or a longer arc length. That way it doesn't punch in through that gap. It'll actually wrap around it. So here we have a T-joint fillet with a short arc length. And here's an outside corner with a long arc length.
All right, guys, that's the basics I could think of to get you started in pulse MIG welding. If this video helped you, go ahead and give me a thumbs up and subscribe if you're not. I'm going to be having new videos coming out here soon. And uh, share it with a buddy if you think it could help them. Uh, be sure if you have any questions or comments, just write them down there and I'll try to get back to as many as I can. And finally, if you love aluminum TIG welding like me, follow my Instagram at 5th Street Fab and go ahead and check out some of my other videos. You guys have a good one.